This week's assignment goes a step beyond our discussion of an interesting dialogue. In discourse analysis, we dissect the elements of conversation. Let's start with locution and illocution. If you want to get someone to do something, the most direct way to go about that is to give them a command. For example, be here around nine. However, in many situations, we view commands to be impolite from a cultural perspective. Instead, we sometimes ask questions like, could you be here at nine? By questioning the possibility of something, we show a little bit more politeness. However, we could distance ourselves from the command even more by just making a statement, such as, if you could be here at nine, that would be great. By this point, we've removed ourselves so much from the command that it sounds like we're just wondering out loud about something that we would like to see. When we do this, however, it is very clear that we're giving someone a command. Hello, Peter. What's happening? Um, I'm going to need you to go ahead and come in tomorrow. So if you could be here around nine, that would be great. Okay? The fact that this manager says thanks shows his understanding that he just gave a command. And the silence of his employee shows that he understood the command as it was given. So even though changing the structure from a command to a question or just a statement can distance someone from a command for purposes of politeness, we still understand all of these to be commands. And this is the illocutionary force that all of them have. They might not all literally be commands, but they're all interpreted that way. Another thing you could choose to base your assignment on is the cooperative principle. For example, a maximum of quantity is that we should not make our contribution to the conversation more informative than is required. This is why we often hear people say, too much information. I'm good. Things are good. I, I'm a, got some, some ideas for the future, some possible business prospects. I think about you all the time. That's a little too much information, I guess. Yes. Sometimes people purposely misuse these or misinterpret these to create humorous expressions. For example, the maxim of manner, avoid ambiguity, could be purposely misconstrued. You're kidding me with the hand up, right? Is it cool if I take a picture with you? Yes, it's very cool. This scene toys with the definition of the word cool, which normally refers to something that's good or in some way desirable. However, in the context of is it cool if I take a picture with you? Cool means something more like permissible, meaning is it permissible for me to take a picture with you? In other words, am I allowed to take a picture with you? When the soldier asks Tony Stark, am I allowed to take a picture with you? By saying, is it cool if I take a picture with you? Tony purposely misinterprets it as meaning, is taking a picture with you a cool thing? And he says, yes, very cool. After you introduce and discuss the situation of discourse under analysis, discuss what your analysis will focus on. For example, will it focus on the cooperative principle and the maxims, types of illocutionary acts, or something different like conversational implicature? Then you should show a short clip from the film or TV program under analysis. Or if you're using a comic, read the section in question out loud so that your viewers don't have to read the words on the screen. Then comment on the segment of speech that you're analyzing. Repeat these steps as many times as you need to, and then close by discussing how the media you used is ideal for making the point you make. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at cadam at ucla.edu. Or you can see me during my virtual office hours on Skype. My Skype handle is christopher.charles.adam. I look forward to talking to you soon. Have a great week.